in the name of almighty allah the most beneficent the most merciful uh, very good morning to all of you from uh, pasa echo helnet uh, pakistan uh, we are very lucky to have professor asim shah on our board again uh, i would like to request professor uh, professor afridi to take over the mic please sir over to you पाकिस्तान in various domain of psychiatry and leave no stone unturned for the cause of psychiatry and i am also thankful to the uh, uh, people working in echo the administration and also all the participants and uh, this series of uh, talk or this series of uh, lectures we have arranged that one week we will invite person from pakistan and another week we will invite person who is pakistani working abroad in the field of psychiatry so now i, I once again i welcome professor asim shah and the question to start his program thank you assalam alaikum ikbal bhai thank you very much for your kind introduction you are to me a voice of psychiatry in pakistan and uh, sitting here i i am so thankful that you are there helping people who need the help so truly truly appreciate you you know i am a big fan of you so i'm 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 really appreciative of everything you do and the way you have uh, managed your ward and and then so many things for others uh, today's topic is um, a topic which is very dear and near to uh, my uh, heart and uh, this is basically a topic um, which is very relevant right now because uh, right now we are not able to touch people right now we are uh, not able to hug people right now we are not able to shake hands so since we are unable to do all of those touching and feeling and those kind of things this topic becomes very relevant in today's day and age uh, the topic is touch deprivation as a consequence of covid-19 pandemic this is this is something which i have been talking about for some time maybe a week or two i had article about this in uh, texas medical center and just today um, there was article uh, from me on the same topic in new york times so this is something which again like i said is a phenomena which i think we need to understand and know and know what can we do to have a feeling of touch so what is touch starvation and what is what is touch deprivation we the human beings are wired to be touch so think about the example when a child is born um and even if the child is born premature uh even at that time even if the child is in nicu uh the doctors tell the mother to go every day take the child from the incubator put the child on their lap so that there is some sort of a bonding so this phenomena of bonding of touching is so important even at that time that it is uh, recommended even at that time why do they recommend that they recommended because when the child touches the mother meaning the touch phenomena what happens in return is a release of a hormone called oxytocin and we all know what oxytocin does at that time after pregnancy which is basically uh, release the secretion of milk so it's extremely important now when people are touch starved uh, we also call it skin hunger or touch deprivation it can happen in a person who experiences little or no touch from other living things now this phenomena was seen in the past in people who were uh, in jails in solitary confinement who were not able to feel and uh, see other people but right now because of the pandemic we are seeing this phenomena we are seeing people unable to touch others we are seeing people not uh, hugging and touching and that has caused a big problem think about the example of eid 
There was no Eid congregation on a massive scale, but maybe few, at least here in, in the US, there was none. Think about Taravi. There were a few places where there were Taravi, but not a lot. The congregations were not as big. So the touching and the feeling and the hugging has decreased drastically. Positive touch is an integral part of human interaction, and we always thrive to have that positive touch. So we are not touching people because we want to prevent the uh, community spread of COVID-19. That is the reason the platonic touch among friends and colleagues is off limits right now. That's the reason we say don't touch either somebody does this or somebody does this or we do the uh, uh, elbow hugs or something, but no touching. So those handshakes, uh, holding hands, hugs, pats on the backs are almost gone. Why? Because they are becoming a taboo. They are becoming a taboo that they are going to cause more COVID-19. Now, we also know that with studies that if somebody touches, um, touching reduces stress and it helps your immune system. So if we don't have the feeling of touch, that will weaken our immune system, which is a problem. And our desire for physical touch starts at birth. So what happens? So when we hug or feel a friendly touch on our skin, as I mentioned, oxytocin, which is a neuropeptide, is uh, released. It is a positive uh, feeling. People feel uh, positive. People feel optimistic. There is a sensation of trust, emotional bonding, social connection, and the fear and anxiety is decreased. So this is extremely important. And that's another reason that oxytocin is called love hormone or cuddle hormone. Again, in early life, that is thought to be crucial for building healthy relationships. And not only oxytocin, but two other hormones are uh, there with touching. One is serotonin, the other is dopamine. And we all know serotonin plays a big part in depression and in anxiety, and dopamine plays a big part in depression also. So touching tackles loneliness. Loneliness is a path to depression, we know that. But touching takes care of that. Even a slight gentle touch, even by a stranger, will decrease this social exclusion feeling or social isolation feeling. So what are the symptoms of touch starvation? So the symptoms of touch starvation are listed here, but if you think about it, feeling of overwhelmingly lonely or deprived of affection, when people start feeling that nobody loves them, nobody cares them, that feeling starts when people don't touch each other. Depression starts, I mentioned the hormones, the serotonin, the dopamine, anxiety starts, people get stressed because oxytocin releases stress, people get stressed. Relationships are not satisfactory. Think about it. If a child and the parent, they don't touch each other, what's going to happen? There is low relationship satisfaction. People don't even sleep well. That's another issue which happens if you are uh, not touching difficulties sleeping and tendency to avoid secure attachments and then subconsciously people do things to stimulate to touch like for example they may take long baths long showers wrap and close themselves and touch themselves or even pets and here i would like to mention that pets are a way that a lot of people can stimulate this touch feeling so pets can be a healthy phenomena for a lot of people who uh, don't know how to uh, get this feeling. So having a pet is always a better thing than not. What is the health impact of touch starvation? So every single medical disease, you think about heart attack, you think about diabetes, hypertension, asthma, every physical disease, every disease is affected with touch starvation. So if you are starved of touch, your heart disease is going to get worse, your diabetes is going to get worse, your high blood pressure is going to get worse, your asthma is going to get worse. Every single medical disease is going to get worse if you are starved of touch. On top of that, every single mental health disease is going to get worse if you are not touching people. So touch starvation can worsen your medical diseases and also worsen your psychiatric or mental health issues. Extended period when we don't have positive physical touch can even lead to post-traumatic stress syndrome. How do we know that? We know that from people who were in solitary confinements, even in Guantanamo Bay and all those areas, that they had severe PTSD. Now, there are other reasons for PTSD too, but touch starvation was one of the reasons which was noted in a lot of them. Now, let's just talk about distancing. 
you have uh, heard the name social distancing numerous times, uh, but I would like to condone that name. I would not like anybody to use the name social distancing. Social distancing is a, is a misnomer, is a wrong name. Why? Because our goal is to socially be connected with people. We are human beings, we need to be connected. Our goal is to have physical distancing, not social distancing. So in other words, socially we should be connected, but physically we need to be separated. And right now the guideline is six feet, but they're talking about even three feet. Uh, CDC is working on that. Uh, if you are less than six feet of another person, you are supposed to wear a mask. So we need to be staying, connecting with each other um, and having a distance for socializing, but not, not socializing. So distantly socialization is fine, but which is what we call physical distancing, but social distancing, meaning not socializing is not right. We can do a lot of virtual get togethers. We can have virtual game nights. We can have virtual book clubs. We can watch virtual movies. We're doing a Zoom meeting right now. It's a virtual. It is a sensation of touch. I'm honestly, I'm feeling that I'm sitting next to Iqbal Bai in Jinnah and uh, about to, he's about to offer me tea or, or some samosa or something, although that's not happening, I know, but I'm honestly feeling that. Uh, really, why? Because you know, you can you can really transport yourself to the environment, which you are, especially if you're familiar with that environment. I'm familiar with his um, uh, classroom setting, so I can even imagine that sitting there. Other thing is texting, talking, emailing with friends and family is a is a very good way to staying connected, socialized. We need to stay active. A lot of people complain, oh, I used to exercise, now gyms are closed, I cannot exercise. You can do a lot of exercises at home. You can walk, you can jog, you can even have a treadmill or something. You can do a lot of things. And lastly, socially connecting means also that we need to have regular meals, regular sleep schedules, and continue with our regular routine. What can we do? What we can do is we need to focus on our uh, hand hygiene, we need to focus on socializing and focus on things that make us um, uh, better. So act of kindness always make us better. Uh, <clears throat> one second, I just have this uh, text from my hospital. So again, we need to find a meaning in this difficult time, how we can do something which is gonna help us and help others. Um, like a lot of us have neighbors which are elderly, can we do something to help them? We don't need to go there, we don't need to um, <clears throat> uh, you know, do anything with them, but we can at least try to do things for them, maybe buying grocery for them, maybe getting medicines for them. So we can do certain things like that. We can donate, we can help in some things. And if we are very lonely, why don't we get a pet, a cat or somebody, something from a shelter? Touching an animal, like I said, is also very helpful. The other thing which makes us very anxious and uh, increases our stress is the news. So we need to be very careful in terms of watching news. I mentioned that before in my previous lectures also that news media is the worst thing to watch right now. You open Geo, you open Airway, you open Express News, whatever. Right now, I think the, uh, the um, attention has diverted from Corona to uh, the actress and, and those kind of things. Everybody's talking about that viral video and uh, what happened. Uh, so the, right now the attention is diverted. Otherwise the news media is always talking about how people are dying, what is happening. It makes people even really frustrated to the point that they cannot handle this anxiety. Now, another thing we can do at home is engage in your own self-care. Some people like cooking, do cooking. Some people like uh, doing gardening, do gardening. Some people like arts and crafts, do that. Some people like muscle relaxation, journaling, uh, writing things, uh, writing an article, paper, do whatever you, enjoy doing, do that. So take care of yourself. Self-care is extremely important. And remember, unless and until we take care of ourselves, we have a high stressful job. If we are unable to take care of ourselves, how can we take care of others? So we have to do that. Now, since we don't have the feeling of touch, what do we do to bring that feeling back? As I mentioned earlier, 
touching causes release of oxytocin. Release of oxytocin helps in uh, improving your immune system, helps in reducing your stress. There is no touching. So how can we replace that oxytocin? What can we do? What we can do is listed here, video chatting. Studies have shown that video chatting is almost as effective as 80% of human touching. So if you, if you basically uh, have video chatting with people and not your, you're not touching, but talking to people via Zoom, via FaceTime, via um, um, you know, any other chatting mechanism, whether it is WebEx or anything else, um, that has the same positive impact on people as literally touching them. So we have to be very careful about that and we can do that. These are easy apps. These are free apps. We are doing one right now. Uh, so we can certainly use them. Then the question comes that, uh, are we going to ever shake hands? Is it the end of handshaking? And the simple answer is that we really don't know right now. But we know that at least for a year or, or for some time, shaking hands is gone. So we, we should revert back to the old times when people used to say adab or people used to uh, do this. Uh, and still some people do this. So, I mean, you are back to that. There's no, uh, no religious thing about shaking hand. It has become more culturally accepted. So if you're not shaking hands, there's nothing wrong about it. We're doing it to, uh, we're not doing it to help our own self. Some experts believe people should never reintroduce handshake. I don't believe that, but I'm just saying that some experts like Dr. Fauci in, in America, uh, they think that handshaking is, is a bad idea, even in the future. Hope things are better and we can go back to that, but right now for the rest of this year, maybe another full year, it is out and we won't be uh, doing this. So just uh, um, remember that. Now, what about the long-term impact of touch deprivation. Think about the impact. So disasters, what disasters have done is disasters have caused uh, a lot of problems. So we know 9-11, 9-11 caused a lot of problems even till numerous years after 9-11. Uh, Hurricane Katrina, Hurricane Harvey caused a, a lot of PTSD, depression, anxiety, even after four years of the actual disaster. But remember, those were one day disasters. They were over in one day. This pandemic is not one day. This pa pandemic started last year. It was declared an emergency March 11th. We are almost in June and there is no end to the pandemic. Remember, if one day disaster can cause impact, long-term impact up to four years, this is a disaster. This is a pandemic which has been continuing and will be continued for God knows how long, many months, maybe a year. So the long-term impact of ditch this pandemic, this disaster of touch deprivation is going to be enormous. It is going to be enormous. So we need to be prepared for that. We need to be doing something about that. Otherwise, we would not know and it would cause a lot of people to be depressed, to be anxious, to have PTSD. Having said that, human beings are very resilient. We are a very resi resilient population and we learn the new ways of human connection. And we will learn to bring joy in different ways, whether it is through video chat or whether it is seeing people, uh, you know, through a plexiglass or whatever, but we will learn to bring joy. We tend to do that. Again, we are resilient. Until we can be socially intact like we used to, we need to at least follow the proper social distancing. And if you are less than six feet from somebody, especially less than three feet, definitely wear a mask and try to stay safe, wash hands, use sanitizers. Now, people talk about how we deal with this anxiety, how we deal with this depression, how we deal with uh, uh, things like that. We are at home, we cannot go anywhere. Uh, uh, some people say I, it's unable, I'm unable to go and see a doctor because of uh, you know, um, this lockdown and so forth. So there are a lot of electronic apps available in the market, which are available for iOS phones, meaning iPhones and Android phones both. Most of them are free, very few are subscription, but they are free so you can download them and get some help sitting at home. Um, so there's no fee, you can do that. So first is WhatsApp. WhatsApp, don't confuse it with WhatsApp. WhatsApp to me is perhaps one of the worst uh, things to prevent disinformation because people tend to forward everything they know without verifying. Somebody forwards you something, you will forward it to somebody else. 
without even verifying it is true or not. And that causes a lot of uh, fear, panic, and anxiety. What's up is a CBT, Cognitive Behavior Therapy app, which is helpful for uh, depression and for anxiety. It's very simple, free, and people can use it to treat depression and anxiety. And then there is another app, again free, called Mood Kit. This is a CBT app, again, Cognitive Behavior Therapy for same depression and anxiety. It is a little more sophisticated than what's up, but otherwise relatively very simple. We know kids need a little different uh, uh, way to deal with apps. So there is a specific app for kids called Mind Shift. This is for kids who have anxiety. This app is really geared with some cartoons, with some uh, kids level stuff, and it's really good for kids less than 16, really helpful for them. Then self-help groups, self-help apps for anxiety are also available. The first is uh, SAM, which is very common and used a lot, again, free. A lot of people like to talk. They like to discuss their depressed feeling. They like to talk. So there is a talk space online therapy available for depression, and they can use that. And there are depression groups. You have uh, certain chat rooms. You can enter into a room with your like-minded people and, and discuss uh, your therapy, discuss your feelings, and it's sort of a group setting. Then we have another app for people who suffer from PTSD called PTSD Coach. And the last three apps, Headspace, Calm, and Simple Habit, can be available free and subscription all. So there is a lot of help available which one can use even sitting home. There's no lack of that. With that, I will turn to Dr. Afridi uh, for any questions and uh, his, his comments. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Asim.